Okay, leadership model one is theory uh, XY, but starting with theory X from theory XY by Douglas McGregor from the 1950s. So what is XY theory of management? McGregor's XY theory is a simple reminder of the natural rules of managing people which under the pressure of day-to-day -day business are actually often easily forgotten. His model suggests there are two fundamental approaches to managing people. Command and control managers tend toward theory X and genuinely and generally get poor results. Enlightened managers, much like our agile leaders, use theory Y which produces better performance and results and allows people to grow and develop. Yes. To share the significant difference in these theories, I'm going to start first with theory X and its negative approach before sharing theory Y as the first positive model today. So let's have a look at uh, these uh, attributes uh, from theory X. The belief is an optimistic view of human nature. Uh, and sorry, is a pessimistic view of human nature. Sorry, not an optimistic view. Gosh, got that wrong. Its change model is that most people must be coerced, controlled, directed, or even threatened to ensure that objectives are met. This is not good at all. The values is obedience. Uh -uh. And lastly, the behavior is autocratic. And this is why it's absolutely common for our command and control um, bureaucratic leaders to follow uh, uh, a model like this, which is obviously completely anti-agile. Now let's look at obviously the good path and the good half here, theory why. Let's look at the four attributes for this leadership model. Its beliefs are an optimistic view of human nature. The change model is that average humans will accept and seek responsibility to achieve goals to which they are committed. You gotta realize, how agile is that? That is exactly what agile leadership is all about. And yet this was written back in the 1950s. The values are around responsibility and we want that responsibility and accountability and ownership in our agile ways of working. And lastly, the behavior is trust. So you can already see how from these contemporary leadership models, these have directly started to influence the modern agile leadership that we have in the 21st century. Let's look at leadership model number two, which is situational leadership from Paul Hersey and also Ken Blanchard. And it's from 1969. So what is situational leadership? Its notable features are briefly that the model focuses on followers rather than wider workplace circumstances. This model asserts that leaders should change their behavior according to the types of followers they have. It also proposes a continuum or progression of leadership adaptation in response to the development of these followers. How agile is that? Let's have a look at the four attributes of this leadership model. Its beliefs are talent and commitment. Its change model is direct, coach, motivate, or empower based on each person's talent and commitment. Its values are honesty. And its beliefs and behaviors are versatility. Let's have a look at leadership model number three. Personally, one of my favorites, often thought about as being part of the uh, modern agile leadership uh, uh, way of working. It is Servant Leadership by Robert Greenleaf, and this was written back in 1970. So 
what is servant leadership? Now, the idea of servant leadership is simple. That the leader serves the followers or a cause which benefits the followers in some way. A leader who embodies this is not leading for reasons of status, wealth, popularity, a lust or a need for power. Instead, they want to make a positive difference to the benefit of all, or at least the majority of the followers they have. Now, crucially, a servant leader also tends to do this knowingly and willingly, and sometimes at his or her own cost, as he writes in the book. Let's have a look at the four attributes of this leadership model and how they play into the world of agile leadership. So, firstly, it's beliefs. Organizations do not contain all the self-correcting mechanisms to ensure individual or team success. The change model. Obstacles are identified through active listening and empathy and must be removed for teams to thrive. Values are humility. And lastly, behaviors are determination. So we now move on to the fourth leadership model. And the fourth leadership model is transformational leadership from James McGregor Burns in 1978. So what is transformational leadership? It's a style which is utilized by leaders possessing specific traits who look to work alongside their team members to identify change and develop next action steps. Most importantly, these leaders transform others just like Agile leaders do today, developing and empowering their individual followers to become leaders and of themselves. It is particularly often used in change management and strategic planning today to develop and deliver a specific vision for the team or an organization, or to aid in changing the culture of a company. And it is a great book. So let's have a look at the four attributes of this leadership model. The beliefs. My world is in need of transformation or change. The change model. Focus on strategy, long-term goals, build on people's need for meaning in their lives. The values. Goals over followers' self-interests and behaviors. Intellectual stimulation promotes creativity and innovation, just like those of the Agile leaders today. So, with those four contemporary models, we can now have a look at the modern leadership model known as Agile leadership, created and evolved by many contributors since 2001, probably some would say even earlier, with DSDM and XP and Scrum from the 90s, including everybody here today. So let's have a look at the four attributes for this leadership model. Beliefs. Agile leaders in general believe that their world is uncertain, competitive, complex, and subject to technological change. They can articulate the specific drivers of uncertainty in their business domain. Agile leaders understand the nature of complex systems and can identify the interacting components that affect the business's future. Those that are under their control and those that are not. They are well read on the competition and also relevant emerging technologies. Next. The change model. The agile leader recognizes that the organization must change as the uncertain, complex, competitive future unfolds. Now, 
the litmus test for all business decisions in this changing world must be the addition of value to users and customers, delighting the customers. Now, the Agile leader communicates a vision of a future state in which the resources of the organization are marshaled to optimize the delivery of the benefit to the customer. And deliveries are incremental, as we all know in the Agile world, and allow for learning about true customer needs. Next, the values. The Agile leader's values are captured in the Agile manifesto. The Agile leader values people over processes, working artifacts over documentation, collaboration over contracts, and change over planning. And lastly, the behaviours. The Agile leader's behaviours encompass curiosity. Curiosity about what delights a customer. Curiosity about team dynamics. Curiosity about entrenched organizational processes. This curiosity is expressed by active listening and acted upon with relentless determination. So as I said, we had a quick talk today, parting thoughts. Firstly, I wanted to share the four books which have helped what I personally believe is part of that agile leadership evolution. And here are the references. So if people want to screenshot this page, take a photograph with their phone, please do. I will leave it there for a few seconds. But genuinely, these are the things that I think truly have underpinned what our modern agile leadership is actually all about. Okay, I will move on. I can always come back to it if somebody wants to uh, see it at the end. So my parting thoughts from the attributes that have been shared this, this evening from the models that I've discussed and that I've just been sharing with you as part of that, I suppose, that leadership journey that I've been on personally in my career. In an agile organization, the agile leadership model has the responsibility to replace command and control. And the organization's leaders believe that the future is uncertain due to the impacts of technology, competitors and control. The organizations, uh, and therefore, sorry, the uncertain future is best addressed by organizations trusting and empowering the people to understand and have the versatility to collaborate with the customer. Having clear goals for the whole organization encourages a one team approach and a determination to work together to succeed. And by setting up an environment that enables divergent thinking, this leads to the creativity and innovation needed for the organization to evolve and adapt. And finally, but most importantly, agile leaders need to replace traditional activities like, for example, somehow building sales forecasts with curiosity about what's actually going to delight the customer. And that is it. Thank you everyone for obviously coming to my talk today on what I believe is the evolution of Agile leadership. And obviously very happy to take any questions uh, and obviously great to see some uh, people from teams I've worked with. Uh, and so if anyone wants to ask a question, please do let me know. Uh, how, as a great question here from, from Mary. Mary, thank you very much. Have you experienced a situation where a new leader comes along and puts things back in reverse? Uh, yes, I have. Um, I've experienced that firsthand. Uh, I experienced that in a previous organization where for whatever reason uh, the senior leadership 
um, really were ha having friction with obviously, I suppose, the, the, the new ways of working in the, the technology parts of an organization. It was causing friction with the sort of the standard bureaucracy managed parts of the world. Uh, and uh, of the organization and the business as a whole, they actually uh, unfortunately got rid of my boss, who at the time was the CTO, and actually got rid of him and brought in somebody who literally was going to revert back to, I suppose, standard bureaucracy, standard micromanagement, and wanted to eradicate agile ways of working and agile leadership in the organization. Uh, and went to back to a real world of command and control. Needless to say, um, I was fighting against that. Uh, he was my new boss. He got rid of me as well. So yeah, I, uh, I've, I've, I've actually been let go because of my beliefs in actually wanting to support teams and people in organizations. So yes, uh, uh, Zalika asks, uh, will the slides be made available? Yes, they will. Absolutely. Uh, um, you're here. You're very welcome, David. Very welcome, Fred. Thank you, Ash. Thank you. If a smaller, so Lavisa asks, if a smaller ask should start with agile ways of working, what would you start with? Great question. I would actually, um, and, and this, I've actually, I was saying to uh, the amazing um, Women in Agile Africa team before uh, all of the participants arrived that I'd been doing a three-hour. Uh, agile coaching session um, right before uh, this talk. So I was already sort of full of energy anyway from having done that. Uh, and we've actually just been having this exact conversation. And one of the things is, is to actually think about the context, the context of the organization, the context of things like organizational complexity, the context of domain complexity, the context of, domain, of technical complexity. You know, um, actually, how big is the organization? You know, are you geographically distributed? Do you have multi-platform legacy? Are you a new startup? So there are many, many options to actually think about and consider when starting a particular agile way of working. For me, it's all about context. There is no point, obviously, being in a startup with the sort of the baby Jesus version of agile and the, the immaculate conception of a product backlog, the arrival of this magically by someone who's written this and actually sort of just starting work with it in a large scale environment. Um, and there's no way, you know, with a small startup with two or three people, you're going to start implementing safe. So, I mean, genuinely, you've really got to think about the context which you are facing. Um, and if you are truly a small startup, there are um, certainly things like the exploratory life cycle you could be doing, setting experiments, setting hypotheses, being very, very agile um, with that sort of thinking long before you even need to start thinking about Scrum or Lean or Kanban or some other way of working as well. There are really genuinely many different ways of working out there to sort of kickstart you. Uh, Conrad's got a question. Recently, the concept of emotional intelligence is getting more important in the context of agile leadership. Yes, the whole thing around emotional intelligence, emotional quotient as well is fundamentally important. Um, you've got to care. I mean, absolutely, right? Um, and look, some of my uh, team are here today um, from uh, our partnership. Uh, and um, I hope they don't put in the, in the chat that I don't care, but hopefully they realize that, uh, you know, I, I care. Um, they all know, and certainly with everything I do, uh, Conrad, to that point, that it's all about people first. I don't even start talking about agile until I start talking about the people, the goals we want to achieve. And then it's usually trying to build a, a hybrid agile way of working that's right for the context of the organization. But people are the primary determinants of success. You go back 10, 12 years, and I guarantee you, if you'd asked Giles back then, I'd have probably said, oh, 80% of this is all around the, the, the methodology and the framework and the tooling and everything else, right? And 10 to 20% is just about telling the people what to do. Uh-uh, you, know, you know, 10, 12 years further on, 
it's it, this realization that actually 80% of the effort of any sort of agile introduction, transformation, change program, bringing in agile leaders is all about, uh, you know, looking after the people first and foremost, 80%. 10 to 20 percent at best is about then actually thinking about the framework the methodology and everything else so that level of emotional intelligence has to be there that emotional quotient right from the very get-go thanks man appreciate the question Segan asks the next question what are your thoughts on agile ways of working in environments that are less technical with little or no software build such as regulatory change well, again, again, it's all around context. Um, I've actually uh, previously, in a previous existence, um, worked with an estate agent. I don't know, in America, you call them realtors. Uh, we call them estate agents in the UK. And actually, in fact, uh, you know, um, they have obviously compliance behind obviously buying and selling properties. But uh, at the same time, they were doing everything with in a very slow way, um, uh, sort of creating silos within the organization design themselves, not getting feedback quickly and not being able to adapt to change, which is what obviously Agile is all about. And so I coached um, one of the guys to become a sort of proxy scrum master slash agile leader within the organization and start changing the organizational design and approach and processes. And they used to have sort of three quarterly lead times, quarterly targets to work towards, sometimes half yearly, far too long, feedback far too late in process, they cannot adopt and adapt to change quickly enough. And as such, he started putting in two week cycles, he didn't call them sprints, he called them cycles. But genuinely, they would set themselves targets working as collaboratively as together as possible. He changed the mindset by being that agile leader, and actually ended up with them actually then obviously having a, a pseudo proxy retro at the end of two weeks to take the feedback of what they had learned in the business and what had changed within those two weeks and then we're able to inspect and adapt and actually move on and actually try something new setting different experiments different hypotheses etc etc and this was phenomenal all of a sudden they became within a, a 12 month period the number one estate agents in the town they were getting the first new houses before anybody else was they knew uh, thinking about things seasonally as well when new students arrived into the town they needed to make sure there was a propensity of rental properties for them to start having for when the new season started and the new term started as well and so obviously a half yearly or a quarterly program for them was not going to work in that world uh, and as far as i know they're still doing successful you know as today as they were back then but they've changed the mindset and the collaboration and the way of working and the level of communication that's agile as far as i'm concerned just the fact they're not necessarily doing sprints and they're not using a, a ticketing system like Jira to start working on something. I, for me, I think that is as, as agile as they possibly can be. So great question. Thank you very much. Selma's asked, agile is good for knowledge work. Can we use it in industrial work? Well, I mean, I hope so, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, to, to be a great servant leader, to be a great uh, mentor, to be a sort of uh, protector of the people, look, making sure people are the primary determinants of success. Yes, you, you should be able to use it in any form of work. And I hope, you know, when I started and I had CTO and CIO leaders, I've been working, this is my 27th year of working. Uh, and uh, when I started working, I worked under command and control, bureaucracy, micromanagement. You know, Agile was in its early days, even XP and DSDM and, and Scrum in the, in the 90s was early. Uh, and as such, the one thing I used to do was I, I railed against it. I also, I always fought against the machine, rage against the machine. But I always said to myself, I never want to end up being like those people who were my leaders, well, I can't call them leaders, managers, shall we? say and the challenge was when I started being a manager and leader I was dreadful I was awful because all I was doing was emulating their behaviors and I know I needed to change right but I'm hopeful that now that we are 20 years later and a lot of us here who've been on that journey as well and I know there are a lot of leaders and a, no shock there as well right those people, we are now the modern leaders in modern organizations, right? I operate as a CTO in a business. And as such, it's my responsibility to make sure that that sort of mindset, that way of working, you know, this agile leadership mantra, you know, is actually what becomes modern leadership in organizational 
design. We shouldn't be classing it as agile leadership. It should just be modern organizational leadership for now and the future. And therefore, yes, it should be uh, the, the leadership style in industrial organizations uh, as well as in you know, technology organizations as well. Would anyone agree with that? Shock, would you agree with that? Yes, he says. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Any other questions? If not, I'm very happy to, uh, to uh, say thank you very much to everybody at Women in Agile. Guys, just before you disappear. Yes, Mary. The, the first question I asked about, you know, leaders coming into organizations and just putting everything in reverse. Um, the way you answered that, that was almost exactly how Sherry Silas answered that question yesterday at um, a webinar she was um, hosting. <laughs> yeah, but my question here is this. How can we stop that from happening? Because yeah. imagine all the effort and the money and the emotions that have gone into transformations only for a new leader to come along and to just, you know, put everything in reverse. It, it is not very nice. And when something like that happened within um, an organization, Sherry was saying she heard that some of the people that had you know, bought into the way of working left the organization. Well, uh, I've got to say, I, I will say this as well, because um, you, she, obviously she's got very similar experience to myself then. I was in an organization when that happened, when they got rid of the, the, the CTO and um, then ultimately myself later on. And uh, the, the CEO uh, remains nameless, but stood up and actually said, you know, this thing working smarter rather than harder. I, I hate this phrase. I want you all to be working harder rather than smarter. And I kid you not. The following day, the first wave of resignation started happening. Exactly the same experience. To answer your question, though, I don't think 20 years ago, with the creation of, obviously, uh, an Agile manifesto, an Agile movement, right, which we are all part of and we all want to, uh, you know, um, see in uh, organisational design, there were not enough Agile leaders, right? And as such, it's taken people like me and many others that are here today, those 10, 20 years to actually go up the sort of the typical corporate ladder in an organization and to sort of reach that top. And now to have the influence right from the top downwards through an organization. So I have that now operating as a C-suite. I can do that, go into an organization, talk to my peers at that C-suite level and actually sort of provide that influence and sphere to them and also bring this new mindset and approach and leadership style to the rest of the organization. And as such, that is what actually is really, really important. You know, when this experience happened to me uh, seven, eight years ago, and as such, uh, I, you know, uh, there weren't enough of the agile leaders to actually stop it. You wanted to say, how can we stop it? I think how we stop it today is by having us here aspire to be those agile leaders in our organizational design and actually make sure that we are championing this, that it actually, you know, agile leadership is just modern organizational leadership from now going forwards. I aspire that people that I'm responsible for in the workplace that they no longer see command and control, micromanagement, um, bureaucracy, and that five, 10 years into the future, they never have to. They, you know, it's just not part of the organizational design. The future will be us in you know, this agile leadership style um, from those four contemporary models I was sharing really do become you know, the, the, the sort of the modern leadership sort of style way of working. Shock's got his hand up. Yeah, yeah hi, thanks, uh, Charles, and uh, thanks for the shout out. And I was just going to respond to Mary's and just follow up with something you, you just said. So, especially it seems everybody on this call, part of the role of being a leader is, is managing that tension. So you, you, you kind of got to accept and lean into that and you've got to recognize where, which levers you've got to pull. And so as Giles said, you know, part of that journey is getting there. 
And Giles, even at that level, I'm sure you are still dealing with tensions of oh, the way so very... oh. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. You know, I, I, I still have that level of tension and they want to tune stuff. And can you just make something go a little bit faster? And I have to always take it back to the basics that respect the process. You know, I actually said this in a, in a senior leadership meeting on Tuesday. Uh, we've got to just be mindful. We've got to respect the process. The, res the process is working. You know, the, the teams where I currently am, are um, you know nine 12 months ago we're kind of delivering 50 60 tickets uh, on a monthly basis not really understanding the prioritization or the value of them as I was talking about and now nearly 12 months later the, the same team is delivering 230 240 tickets a month and it comes from the proper sort of product portfolio prioritization view that the SLT have, you know, they can obviously prioritize the work, you know, the product family are doing the right thing and obviously identifying the value. We're doing obviously the right thing, weighted shortest job first. How can we get 80% of the value from doing 20, 30% of the work? This is awesome. And this is actually the right way. And this is what the future should be. But I guarantee you, I still have the challenge. Can you just not tweak that or tune that or make that a bit faster? No, let's respect the process. We've already done an, a major improvement journey from 50, 60 to 230. Now we've just got to obviously take it to the next level as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's this is complex. Yeah. It is not complex. easy. If it was if it was easy, we wouldn't be needed. If if everybody knows where to go, how to get there, what to do, you don't need leaders. People just get on and do it. Correct. And and that's why everyone's here. So I think great presentation, Giles. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, um, thank you, everyone. Uh, certainly, uh, thank you, Abigail, and thank you, the, the, the women in Agile Africa team, for asking me to come along today and do this. And I hope I get to come back in the future uh, on a, a, another presentation, probably something to do with Agile leadership in the workplace. But for me, these are the four books that genuinely have uh, sort of given me the the knowledge and sort of a realization that actually I think these have underpinned what our um, agile uh, leadership has sort of been born from and, and you can clearly see that and yes these uh, decks will be made available and I will give them to the uh, women in agile Africa team to uh, be able to give to people afterwards but if thank not thank you so much you know, thank you're you very so welcome. much guys Amazing Hi girls, I want to sincerely yeah. say thank you. Thank you. Please, I hope you've dropped your LinkedIn where we yeah. can, uh, where people okay. can connect I, with you. I will um, do this right now. Okay. I want to sincerely say thank you so much, girls, for taking a journey with us. I mean, it's a, it's a first time African women are organizing, and four ordinary women are organizing a conference of this magnitude. And, and awesome. I want to sincerely appreciate you for coming to share your wealth of expertise with our community. And uh, thank you so much. We are totally and very much grateful. Uh, some snippet of the session will be on LinkedIn. And the rest will be on the website. If you'd like your details to be on the website, because the website right now is 80% done. We want people to connect with you even after the conference, because for well, believing in us and giving us your time is something we do not take for granted. I hope you'll be joining the 6 p.m. session. The 6 p.m. session is with a keynote speaker uh, today. Then we have another one tomorrow. Thank you so much, gals. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Hey, David. Thanks very much, man. Appreciate it. You're here. So everybody, thank you. Mary, some awesome questions. Segan, some awesome questions as well. Zalika as well. Absolutely appreciate it. Also, Conrad, shock. Thanks for uh, uh, stepping in as ever and always helping. Ahmed, look, really appreciate it. Giles Lindsay on LinkedIn, or you can reach out uh, at, to Giles at agiledeltaconsulting.com. And look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you, Giles. Thank you so much. Bye. Cheers, everybody. And see you all at 6 p.m. in a few minutes. Thanks, everyone. Okay, leadership model one is theory uh, XY, but starting with theory X from theory XY by Douglas McGregor from the 1950s. So what is XY theory of management? McGregor's XY theory is a simple reminder of the natural rules of managing people, which under the pressure of day-to-day -day business are actually often easily forgotten. 
His model suggests there are two fundamental approaches to managing people. Command and control managers tend toward theory X and genuinely and generally get poor results. Enlightened managers, much like our agile leaders, use theory Y, which produces better performance and results and allows people to grow and develop.